And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, live today, which is Wednesday, hump day. Not that it really matters at the moment because, like, most days are the same. And But <laughs> the best thing about today is I get to speak to the incredibly talented, skilled, amazing Julie McDonald. Hello, oh, Julie. Thank you, Annette. What a great intro. Oh, uh, look, I, that's hey, why Lee. you pay me the big bucks. <laughs> No payment at all, people, no payment at all. <laughs> Just friendship. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. I love talking to you. Like you've had such an incredibly interesting life. And for those of you who may not recognise Julie or going, Julie McDonald, where do I know that name from? Like a, an incredible Aussie swimmer who I think you still hold the record for no, I, I, it was broken. Um, I held the Commonwealth record for 21 years uh, and it was broken in the era of when the girls wore those um, or they all wore the suits. Ah. And, uh, yeah, so it got beaten by 0.1 of a second. I was kind of happy because I knew the girl, but I was kind of peed off because <laughs> they used the suits. <laughs> yeah, it's come on like, man, I just had my skin and a bathing suit, you guys. Yeah. But I guess it, that's... Well, you know, it's interesting. I was talking to a um, uh, a group of swimmers in Melbourne uh, earlier in the week and uh, I was saying to them, you know, like, I don't know how you guys wear those suits that you wear now because they're all these suits that take them 20 minutes to get it on. It may rip and then they've got to go get another one on. And that's too much. Like my anxiety levels would go through the roof before a race if I had to worry about a swimsuit breaking. We had old Lycra suits, you know, um, and for me, that was, I just think, just simpler. Everyone should go back to simple, right? Yeah, well, we, we're doing that at the moment. But my first thought was, how do you go to the toilet? In those suits? Yeah. I've got a feeling they sit on the side in the gutter. Ooh. But then <laughs> I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, let's wash some water on them. Yeah, like, whereas the old ones, you just pull them aside and, you know, Bob's your uncle, away you go. I know, like, right? That's pretty incredible that you had a, a record that lasted 21 years, quite a legacy in swimming. Do you ever do you ever miss it? Um, look, I, I don't miss the training. You know, I was one of those crazy people that um, used to push myself incredibly hard uh, because I wasn't the most talented kid in the in the race, you know. I mean, this is what I miss. This is what I miss, getting these things around my neck, right, Ooh, little yes. medals. I've held your medals. Love a, bit of, love a bit of bling, right? So I've got them here to show everybody. But I, um, that was my Olympic one. Oh, my God. And this is a nice shiny gold one. Everyone loves the gold. Where do you but keep in, them? In a, in a safe, in a... Um, I've got a safe built into my house. So, oh, so they're not hanging that. up in the loo. <laughs> no. No. No, you could walk in my house and no one would know that this was my house because there's nothing hanging up that says my swimming, you know. It's sort of that was a an error. Um, I think I what I miss is probably the um, the discipline. I, I found that after I stopped swimming my discipline kind of went out the window a little bit and my motivation to exercise. And <laughs> so I kind of, um, you know, really people go, oh, you know, but you can just tap into that. And it's it's quite hard, right, because given given the option of sleeping in the bed or going out for a walk on the winter's morning, I'm sleeping in the bed. But I've, I've just recently set myself um, a new target, a new goal that... I wanted to exercise at least five days a week because I don't want to be one of those people that comes out of out of this time and uh, have been 10 kilos heavier. I'm 10 kilos too heavy as it is. So I'm like exercising every day and eating healthy foods. So that's kind of where I've sort of tried to get back into that um, discipline. Well, and I guess, you know, you were saying that you weren't the most talented kid in the pool but what you're talking about is that you're able to achieve achieve those incredible um, feats because you're disciplined and you had a goal. Like you don't get into the pool and just go, yeah, I just swim on my back a few times and fingers crossed and hope it happens. 
how how integral was that goal setting to you know standing on those podiums well it was funny it, it happened almost automatically you know i remember when i was 14 years of age the 84 olympics were um upon us we had seven olympians in our squad and i remember you know we idolized those those people and we all wanted to be like them and i remember watching the olympics in 84 and um so i grabbed these to show people because this is this is sort of a lead in to how i first started doing vision boards right so that was my willie was the mascot of the um of the 84 olympics and so you go through my logbook and there's member hero grams yeah so oh that was goodness. a hero i know right i need to get the camera right hero grams that i sent to um that one to justin lemberg so in my logbook i would keep and i'd put stickers on there right so and, and i'd make it entertaining hey gabrielle and i would write in there what i wanted to achieve um how the guys all swam you know so every bit of everything that i did i wrote into this into these books into my log books and Is then i would school diary pardon me is that an old school diary yeah <laughs> i remember though sorry i interrupted i, I know right so i turned it into a log book and so that was the week of the 84 olympics and so i really enjoyed doing that and i would put these things little goals and little reminders of what I wanted to achieve. So that then when I was, look, winning isn't normal, right, but have fun. So I, every time I would go to write in my logbook, I'd, I'd see those messages and I and I knew that, that for me that was inspiration. And when, you know, John Sieben won his gold medal in the 84 Olympics, that was my moment. That was me screaming in front of the TV, cheering him on and, you know, getting, from my couch to being two inches away from my TV screen um, <laughs> by the time he hit that wall, you know, tears streaming down my face. And that was the moment I said, Mum, I want to make the next Olympics. And she's just looked at me and said, sweetheart, if you train hard enough, you'll get there. And, you know, I wasn't the world's best trainer then, though. You know, I used to do a lot of this, <laughs> you know, waving on the bottom of the pool. True story. And then Laurie came back and I and I I looked at John O's gold medal, I looked at Justin Lemberg's bronze medal, and Laurie said, Who wants to go to the next Olympics? And of course we all put our hand up. Yeah. And he you're, said you're talking about Laurie Lawrence. Laurie Lawrence, yeah. yeah, he was my coach. A lot of people remember Laurie. Well, he was and he is a lunatic, right? He's but memorable. He, yeah, the best lunatic for me because I was that person that needed that. Um, you know, just I just needed something. I needed the the inspiration. I needed um, someone to kick me up the butt, you know, when I wasn't doing it well. And he said, you know, I remember thinking, well, I want to go, you know, and that everything changed for me. I stopped sitting on the bottom of the pool. I started, you know, making all the laps. Stop, I stopped missing laps. And for me, that was just about, you know, each day do something that is going to put me one step closer to those Olympics. So you had like so you, you're you're an Olympian, a Commonwealth Games athlete. You know you've reached the pinnacle of of where many young sports people will go. That's what I attain for. Is it possible for anybody, regardless of whether they're in sport or business or life or whatever it is, to set goals and achieve them? Yes. So I truly believe it. Um, you know, I did a, a lot of work with the domestic violence charities and one of the projects I did with them was a vision board workshop. And one of the girls, this was probably 12 months ago, and one of the girls, I was um, doing one of my interviews and uh, my phone kept going ping, ping, ping. And I'm like, I'll talk to her later. Like, what does she keep messaging me for, you know? Anyway, she was so excited. I got off my um, Zoom and I rang her and I said, hey, what's going on? She goes, you're not going to believe it. She goes, actually, you will believe it, but you're not going to believe it. I said, what? And she said, all my things on my vision board came true. And I went, that is so awesome, right? And I love getting phone calls like that. So for me, it's about you've got to be really clear on what you want, but also there's there's missing elements in goal setting. And there's lots of, I love personal development and I love 
finding ways though, of helping people to achieve the best that they can achieve or helping them to achieve the goal that they want to achieve. And unfortunately in the past, there's been one element that's been missing about a lot of goal setting. And some people stumble on it accidentally, but that missing element is what I, I want to teach people to say, if you can you know, incorporate this into your life and into your goals and into your vision boards, that is the that is what's going to propel you to be able to achieve it. And everybody says, if you can see it in your mind, you can achieve it. If you can, like I'm big on visualisation. I just lay there in bed and I would visualise myself over and over getting up on the victory dice. And I say to people, if you can visualise yourself, whether it's in the career that you want or it's in a position in that company that you want, you can get there because... You know, um, there's a great saying by Earl Nightingale, what the man can thinketh, the man can achieve or something like that, right? So what he can think, so what he can see in his mind, he can achieve because the brain will not allow you to think about something you can never achieve. Mm. Oh, and that's why so many people don't reach their goals. And I guess, I guess that's why whenever there's a sports, you know, a famous sports person who's speaking somewhere we flock to hear from them because you've had that training on how to make your goals a reality because visual, visualisation's a, a big part of sport, isn't it? Yeah. There was even um, a, someone did a documentary or a, uh, a test on a group of athletes. They had, say, 30 athletes. They had 10 that did only training. They had 10 that did 50% um, training, 50% visualisation and they had one group that just did visualization. And the group that did the training and visualization won, but by second was the people that did the visualization only, no training. So that was just for, a, you know, like a, a short stint. Obviously you have to do training to be fit and all that sort of stuff, but it oh, just shows the power. Me, I just went, that's it, I'm at the next Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> visualize winning and, a marathon. <laughs> Oh, I would. I hate running. I would so hate to run. My Honey. girlfriend, she, <laughs> she is uh, a girl. Actually, she beat me at the Commonwealth Games in 1986, and we lost touch for a number of years. And we got back in touch a couple of years ago. And she was living in New Zealand at the time. Anyway, she moved to Australia, so I was super excited that I was going to see her again. And uh, she's she's always been fit. She's taken up running. She posted on Facebook the other day. She ran half a marathon. I'm like. What's wrong with you? Like, oh I could probably I, roll half a marathon. <laughs> I could, I'll I walk. You'd walk. Oh, yeah. I don't even know whether I'd want to walk. That's 21 kilometers. It's a lot, hey? Get a bus. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Makes sense. Now, I interrupted you. You're talking about the study that they did the experiment. So, half had visualized and trained, half visualized. Yeah, so the, there was three groups. So one group just trained, one group visualised and trained, and then the other group visualised. The people that visualised and trained won. They, got, they, they were most successful. It was in basketball. Uh, the group that just visualised got second, you know. So it was just the power that when you visualise yourself doing something and doing it in perfect, right? So Laurie used to always say, perfect practice makes perfect because you could practice something over and over and be doing it wrong doesn't mean that you're going to get better at it right so but when you visualize yourself i you know if, if someone out there if a, if a child wants to be a doctor and he can visualize himself in the white coat the stethoscope around him but he's also got to think what would he hear he's got to incorporate the senses into that as well what, what would he hear what would he smell what would he taste things like that, that that would then, um, that's tuning the brain and the subconscious into wanting to, you know, steer him towards that. And and anyone that's done goal setting would understand that once they're very clear on that and they incorporate that in, they will meet people who um, are, they meet and they go, how uncanny. I meet this person and I want to do this. It was the same as when I wanted to run workshops with domestic violence for women that have gone through it. I set that goal. I was doing, I was being mentored by a guy in America 
He said, what's your goal? I said, I want to run workshops with women that have gone through domestic violence. He said, why? I said, well, it's, uh, it's something I want to do. I want to give back. And he said, how are you going to do it? I said, I have no idea. Two months later, I met a woman that had started a charity and she was running workshops. Uh, she wanted to run workshops for women that have gone through domestic violence. And I'm going, there you go. So you just got to trust that process. Yeah. And, and in that what you're saying, that's a gap for a lot of people when it comes to goal setting is, is they may have written the goal and it's like, you know, and it wants to win, you know, the 20 whatever year Olympics marathon. But unless I, I close my uh, truck, so we'll go back, I'll train. But yeah. once I've trained that I sit there and I go, okay, I can feel myself. You know, I'm getting to the end, the finish line. I put a bit of speed on. The crowd's going, ah, calling out my name. I cross that line and it's just like it feels so good. Yeah. We're not doing you that. you got goosebumps. i got goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can see me winning, can't you? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's yeah, it, there's lots of missing elements. So when I talk to people about goal setting, I say to them, okay, you know, or if I'm doing a little keynote, of how many people here write down their goals? You know, and that might half of the room might put up their name, up, up their hand. And then, you know, I say, so out of those people that put up their hand, how many of you have written them down? You know, there might be a third that have written them down. So, okay, out of you, that are, how many times, you know, how many of you read them every day? You know, and there might be one out of a room full of people. So people might say they're doing goal setting but they're not doing it effectively to be able to achieve what they really want. So there's lots of missing elements that people aren't doing to be able to get that great success that they want. I feel like I should probably go sit in the corner because I just failed <laughs> goal setting. <laughs> <laughs> but we like, don't know what, we don't know what we don't know, right? Yeah, I it's just like, write mine like down at the beginning of the year and go, this is what I want to achieve. Yeah, but I don't think I've gone back and what is it May? I haven't gone yep. back. I, I will tell you that coronavirus was not on my goals list. <laughs> didn't manifest. Staying at home for four months, but yeah. that's it. We don't know what we don't know, and and I don't know what you know about um, your industry, right? So it, it's about sharing what we know, and and I think twenty twenty for me is about collaboration. And it's about coming together and helping each other and the sharing of knowledge. And for me, that's, um, you know, I had a lady here today who was teaching me things about Instagram that I didn't know. And, and it's the sharing of knowledge. And I think that's what, you know, we get out of this at the end of the year, that we all come together and we help each other and we all are going to be better people for it. Yeah, I agree. We had uh, Janine McFarlane on this morning and she started a Facebook group called Swap Till We Drop and it's all about that barter exchange of, you know, Julie's really good at, at goal setting and helping you bring those dreams to life and Annette's really good at storytelling. What about if, Julie, you, you know, you're running a webinar, I can come and sit in and learn and I'll write something for you. And there's that, it's a, that quid pro quo, isn't it? And we, we yep. both benefit out of that. That's it, you know, and, and, and like I was, you know, I still haven't started, but um, <laughs> I haven't set that goal yet, but I wanted to write a book, right? And so I reached out to you and said, hey, you know, I, and, and it's, a, it's about having masterminds, right? So Earl Nightingale talks about this. Napoleon Hill talks about this, the author of uh, Think and Grow Rich. You know, they talk about the mastermind and you can bring people in and you bounce ideas off each other so that then you all win. You know, it's, all, it's, all, it's got to be everybody's got to win. It can't be just one person wins. So I think that, you know, if we can start masterminds, and, and that's like the Facebook groups, right? So um, I wanted, I love inspiring people, so I set up my group, Inspired Life, and, and then it sat there for a little while because I'm not social media, you know, I'm not one of those people that do post every day. I do struggle sometimes. But then, but I wanted to inspire people, and and you know, I use Facebook to either entertain, um, make people laugh, you know, which, which is usually at me, uh, you know, like leaving out my sweet potato so the rat or possum comes and eats it. Well, like, um, oh, I know. Actually, we found out it was a rat. Oh, 
I know, right? Because my cat died in November. And so, and we've got a feeling that it's a rat. So we're going to set some traps. Um, and, uh, you know, and so for me, it's about, you know, if I can teach them something that they don't know, or I can make them laugh and, and feel or feel loved, then that's what I want to do. Yeah, I like that. That just, that fills my heart because it, it felt like as we ended 2019 and as we rolled into, you know, the beginning of a new decade, everything had become transactional, that there wasn't a moment where you, you said to people, oh, I need help with this, and they go, well, that'll be $197 for the hour, and you're like, but I just I just need this little bit of information to be able to let me get to the, the next level. Are you a big believer in the law of reciprocity? I imagine that you would be. Yes, absolutely. It, it's I love all the laws, right, and if we can live, live our life you know a lot of people know about the law of attraction they know um the they may not know law of oh, i've gone into blank but it'll come to me um it's when we can live our life because we're not supposed to struggle we're supposed to live uh, um, an easy life but we're always everybody gets into this habit of wrestling and feeling like they've got to fight for stuff so when i hear someone that you've got to fight for it it's like no you don't no, let's take take a step back and let's walk into it with a better energy because, you know, if we're fighting, what's going to happen? It's going to be pushing stuff away, you know, and I'm a big believer that, you know, what we're thinking about, what we, what we feel, what we're, the energy they're projecting, what we think about somebody, right, is going to come back. So, um, you know, if you can offer something to somebody, that's going to come back to you. It may not come back straight away, you know, but it will come back. And, you know, it's just a, I, that's why I sort of think, yes, we've all got to make a living and we've all got to make some money um, to be able to live, but I think that there's ways that we can um, sort of enlighten ourselves and, and make our life a bit easier by sharing of that knowledge and, um, and our experience. But we have a question from... The peanut gallery, just back there. Yeah. Hailing's asked, but would you have a record in the Olympics if you hadn't have fought for it? Uh, I wouldn't have had that medal if probably if I hadn't have fought the last, um, you know, that last 50. Yet, yes, you're the difference between fighting and racing. So I raced the race of my life to get that medal. I didn't fight the water for it. I had to be in flow with that water to be able to get myself propelling through the best way that I could. So there's always different ways of thinking about it, right? So it's finding out what that, how that works for you and then, um, you know, and then utilising that. And, you know, heck, I, I couldn't tell you the number of mistakes I've made in my life and decisions that have been wrong and stuff. But everyone has been a learning curve to then go, you know, how do I not make that mistake again? Or how can I teach somebody else not to make that mistake? You know, that's what I love doing. Yeah, that's cool. And it brings, it, make, it makes me think about like when we use certain words that, you know, you'll get very learned people who will pull you up and go, if you use that word, then that's what you're going to manifest into your life. And it's like, it's just a, like my son who uses the F and the C word every opportunity he can. It's like, but you don't want to, the, the, the venom that you're putting that out is you're going to attract that venom back to you. That's it. And it's hard, um, you know, it is really hard to send somebody love that may have done the wrong thing to you. And um, I am a DB survivor. And for me to be able to send that person love, it's about, um, it's very healing. But it, it's not that I'm in love with them. It's that, that we all exist for a reason. We're all here to learn a lesson. And that I, I you know, for me, it was about taking responsibility. Why did I take, why did I manifest that into my life? You know, and I shared that with someone the other day, and he was, and he's very, he's an energy worker, and he was like, "Congratulations on taking ownership of that." And I understand that a lot of 
there are a lot of DV um, situations that that person hasn't, you know, they've just been in the wrong situation. But for me, that was being um, not truthful, you know, and I and I had to take my responsibility of what was my role in that. Um, and when I did that, it really freed me up, you know. And so it's finding what is your lesson and then being grateful for that lesson and you giving that love, not necessarily that person. That it's makes very, sense. It's cathartic, isn't it, I, when when we take ownership? And, and I can remember wrestling with that when someone said, well, you manifest these things into your life. And I've gone, that's a load of shit. Like I didn't <laughs> ask to be in a domestic violence situation or to get, you know, chronic illnesses or, you know, all of the, the hard things that have come into my life. And it, it's interesting, isn't it, that we choose to repel the negative in our life and go, that's not my fault. But if anything good happens in our life, it's like, yeah, absolutely, it's totally up to me. <laughs> absolutely right. You know, I just love that whole, I love everything, you know, I've learned a lot in the last couple of years um, surrounding myself around uh, people that are health experts. And so I draw the information out of them so that I sound a lot smarter, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> just use use other people's info, right? Um but it's just about that holistic approach. So I, I say to people, you know, there's no point you doing what I'm telling you to do in this avenue if you're going to go and shove macas down your throat, you know, because I work with a lot of people that have got health issues. You know, there's no point. Don't waste your money. You know, just how much, how well, you know, I, I say to people like out of 10, how important is it for you to get well? You know, and it's not just nutrition and you know what I work with and stuff it's the mind as well and the emotions you know because I'll, we've learnt a lot about that what happened to us as children you know bedded into the subconscious it gave us that belief system and from that belief system things can manifest physically and I've I've proven this to myself um, I'll tell you a story I did some nerve damage to my neck uh, about four years ago uh, then, actually, no, it was five years ago I did the nerve damage to my neck. Four years ago, a year after, I was I was better. I had in, investigated a lot of different treatments to get better. Got myself better. I was all good. At the time, I was the president of the Queensland Olympians Club. So I was the one that organised all the events. And uh, the Rio Olympians had come back from Rio and I had to, we had a special little party to welcome them home and family and friends only and I had to stand up in the middle of the room and say to them hello I'm your president um congratulations all that stuff did well um would love you to be part of the Olympians club and come and um celebrate being an Olympian and uh you know and and come to our events right and so the next day was the welcome home official welcome home I woke up the next day I could not lift my head off the pillow I had a searing pain right where I'd done that nerve damage. I had a searing pain in my neck like someone was stabbing me. I, I screamed out to my partner and said, can you come and help me? I need to get up. He got me out of bed. You know, we were using everything. I was doing affirmations. I was putting all kinds of things on me to try and help. Um, I kept just repeating affirmations because I had to go to this and I wanted to go to the Welcome Home Parade. So I'm driving in there. I had a few more attacks while I was going in. I got into the mall, was coping quite well, had another one. The ambulance people came to see me. I'm chucking ice on it. I'm rubbing my stuff on it. I'm doing everything, right, everything I know. I'm saying affirmations in my head. I get through the ceremony and everything. I get it back in my car. It happens again. It happens another two times coming home. I get home and my partner, he is a plasterer by trade, but he's done energy healing in the past and he's done Reiki and remedial massage therapy. And, I, and I'm like, oh, and, we, and there were a few people that offered suggestions about what it could be. Anyway, he said, it's not that. He said, what have your thoughts been the last 24 hours? And I went, oh, well, we're not standing up in the middle of all the gold medal Olympians, I was thinking, who am I, the bronze medalist, just to tell them to come to my events? 
and it was within and he got right up me he was like you're an olympic medalist you're this you're a dead and he like went off you know no, 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 look what you've done within 10 minutes the pain has stopped isn't that amazing yeah. i can and remember saying to my son like the very first award that i won and i got it for sitting on my ass but it was <laughs> what i do well i shouldn't be saying that i don't no. do that well no you Stop work hard that. <laughs> I'm going to visualise that marathon. Uh, yeah. But the first award I won was a bronze award for um, being a, a new startup. And my son said to me, it's just a bronze mum. And I went, no, it's not. You know, if I was a sports person, I would be on that podium standing in front of all of those people because I put the work in, I made it happen, and I got the win. So it's yeah. more than just a bronze. It's interesting, isn't it, how we just kind of like go, nee, 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 like yeah. that rat eating the sweet potato. We yeah. nibble away at our confidence and our esteem until we yeah. don't believe that what we're doing is worthy of acknowledgement. That's it. We are our own worst enemies. You know, that voice in our head and people go, what voice? It's like that one, that one that just said to you, what voice, right? It's our worst enemy. And when you can master that, you know, the world is your oyster. You know, I, um, you know, for me, that was a big, um, that was a big lesson that day it was like, be careful what you think about. And, you know, and I, 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 I have different tools in my toolbox that I used when I know that I need help. You know, if I need help, I'll go see my hypnotherapist and, and, and I'll say to him, okay, this is what I want to do. Let's, let's go for it. And, you know, just finding those people that are uh, your tools in your toolbox to be able to, so that you can win. And winning isn't just about a gold medal. Winning is about being the best version of yourself that you can be. Oh, I just got goosebumps. Now, <laughs> you mentioned to me that um, a, you, there's a webinar or something because, like, talking about goal setting, I've realised that I'm not doing it right. Um so you teach people how to do this stuff? I do. Um, and so I thought I would, you know, if anyone wants to understand how to do their goal setting, right, I thought I could run a webinar for your listeners. Um, it's free and give them a bit of an insight into how they can start now while they've got time <laughs> to be able to really put those steps forward and, you know, achieve what they want to achieve. So um, I don't want it to clash with anything that you guys are doing, um, but you know, like we could do it next week, uh, maybe Wednesday. I'll work in around you guys, um, and uh, yeah, be happy to. If I can teach someone something, then how good would that be? Yes, Haley just stole the words out of my mouth. That's I was going to say that's way cool, but to be able to learn at the feet of someone who has invested so much in their personal development and is you know, stood on the podium to win a bronze medal at the Olympics. I reckon that sounds pretty damn fine. We will talk off air about yeah, that. Sure. And we even like for kids, right? Yeah. Well, and God, anybody. Mm. Like you could be 10 or you could be 90. You know, we should all be striving for more in our life. And, you know, that if you can show us the magic way to do that, you know, it's not magic, but... Oh. Wow, how valuable. Julie McDonald, just one more amazing comment. That is awesome. We agree that's awesome. Thanks, Thank Dale. you for joining us today and sharing your wisdom. I love talking to you. Uh, you I just, love talking to you. I know. We, we should talk more often. I know, right? I Without said that to look. someone yesterday. Opportunities, right? I think this has given us the opportunities to be able to reach out and connect better. And, yeah. uh, you know, when Hayley you know, first said, oh, I'm doing this group. I was like, yeah, I started a group and I put it on the bandwagon. I never, you know, got it going. So, I'm, you know, um, it was funny how our all stars aligned and, you know, I think it's uh, a great thing. You guys Absolutely. are doing a great job. Thank you, Julie. And if there's anyone in now, we're big believers in everyone's got a story and everyone has we want to give them the opportunity to share their story like Julie has today. So I'm going to pop a link in the comments on how you can apply to become a, a guest on Live with Obsessed. Julie McDonald, oh, thank you. You're a champion. Thank you, guys. Always and forever.
Uh, thanks, guys. Love you heaps. See ya. Bye.